This wrestling is actually going to thrust you into the depths of the river. And in the dream, I started yelling, keep fighting, keep wrestling. It's a good fight. This is a good wrestle and it will lead to revelation. It will lead to the revelation of the emotions of God, just like it did with David. And I, I kept yelling, keep wrestling. You're not disqualified. You feel overlooked and forgotten, but at the same time, you're wrestling and fighting to find God in the midst of these fiery arrows and lies, and God is so pleased. I mean, he is pleased with you, and I just tell you in the dream, I said, he's coming to you. He's pleased with you, and I love that. This first group of people just need to know that God is pleased with the wrestle. And don't give up. I don't care how much you are wrestling with your emotions. Don't give up. Just keep it up. Just keep it up. I saw that God loves the wrestle. He loves it. It moves his heart. The wrestle is not a disqualification, but in fact, it leads to a blessing. But because of the struggle, this first group of people, they, they've taken themselves out, of, themselves out of the river because they felt like God was not pleased with them. And they have placed themselves on their own at Korah's tent. And God says, get back into the river. I'm coming to you with a blessing. Amen. Then I saw a second group. There was a second group of people who were at Korah's tent who have always been the disgruntled ones? Who have said, I love the lowest place as long as I'm not there. I mean, heads up. Everybody has to go. It's just how it is. This group is actually giving in to the fiery arrows. And what is being written on their hearts right now is bitterness and resentment at the river and who the river is touching and who gets the microphone. And the Lord is still saying, you know, he, he's inviting you to the wrestle. I mean, there's a, a group of, of, and I don't know, I don't know who it is, but there's, there's a, some people that bitterness has actually taken root in your heart, and God is so about restoration. And he's so about restoration, and you know that bitterness gets in your heart because you're angry, and you just aren't, you're just angry when you're, at the renewal, or a little bit frustrated. And, and, and the, the word of the Lord to you is just, I invite you to the wrestle. I mean, nobody's out. Nobody's disqualified, but he's saying, you just need to start wrestling. And, and it's never easy. That, that is never easy, and it never takes one time. I mean, that wrestle when you're like, oh, gosh, how come I can't have the microphone? This microphone thing, you know, I mean, that's just a big deal. But, but I, you know, and it's just those, it's, it's any thought that just makes you sting. It just hurts a little bit. And, and God is saying, just bless that person. That's how you get over it. I mean, how you, how you get unoffended is at someone is you just start blessing them. I bless Wes. I bless Alan. I bless Corey. I bless Misty. I bless whatever, whatever. Worship whatever. You just start blessing. And it never takes one day or one hour. Sometimes it can take a while. But it's just the wrestle. And he's saying to you who have let, and you know who you are. You know who you are. I mean, he's just saying, I'm inviting you to the great wrestling match that will lead you into the heart and the emotions and the revelations of Jesus Christ. So just begin the wrestle. And I love that. Uh, I, I love that because nobody's out. I mean, nobody's disqualified right now. And the key is Wes and Allen, they're the first fruits, beloved. They're the first fruits. It's the first wave. There's others. Zillions of waves. I prophesy zillions of waves. So I just say, get back into the river. I mean, just get back into the wrestle. Just start wrestling. And I love this. I saw, I saw West Hall. And I, I just I saw in the dream that the Lord spoke over Wes. And I I, I saw at the at the same time I saw I saw water and the river pouring out of Wes's feet. I saw this river spread to the north, to the south, to the east and the west. And then a great voice came from across the great deep. 
But the voice, which was the Lord, who was over the waters, called him Wesley. Specifically, the second Wesley. And when I had the dream, I thought the first Wesley was Wesley Campbell. I didn't know the story. That's the only Wesley I knew. But I love, oh, I love this part. I heard the voice of the Lord call him from Great Britain. And I, and I told this to Wes, you'll know when this invitation's come. You'll know when this invitation comes because uh, your heart will begin to burn within you. And when this voice calls, I saw Wes go. And when he stepped off the plane, the river that, went in his, that was in his feet began to pour onto the streets of London. And in the dream, I heard a song. I heard the Lord sing, when the second Wesley comes to town, something greater and bigger and wider and broader than the first is coming down. <laughs> when the second Wesley comes to town, something greater and bigger and wider and deeper then the first Wesley is coming down. I love that. I do. I love it. Because I love, I love England. I love Great Britain. I believe that though there is a cloud of blackness over that land, that God has an answer. I think that God, he's going to raise up his house of prayer and he's going to touch that young Prince Harry. He's going to encounter him. I believe it. And that Prince Harry's going to lift up a cry for righteousness in the land. You just watch and see. England's not forgotten. Amen. I saw Wes Hall as the second Wesley. God called him the second Wesley. And in, in my notes I put, and whoever the first one is, because I didn't know the story. What our Wes Hall is going to bring to London and England and Britain is greater than the first Wesley. But the Lord had a word of warning to our second Wesley. Do not make this your platform. I came to you simply because you said yes. Don't make this your ministry. Don't make it your platform. Just follow me where I lead. Stay low and stay humble. Amen. And then I saw Alan and the Lord anointed Alan Hood like Jeremiah. One nine, and that this isn't me. This is the Lord, Jeremiah one nine. Then, then the Lord put forth His hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, "Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over nations, and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant." I felt in the dream that a visitation is coming to Alan Hood of something great because I saw coming from Alan's mouth and fingers, I saw lightning. Like when Alan Hood would preach, lightning would come out of his mouth, like real lightning that shoots forth from the sky like a true bolt, a loud thunder. When Alan would pray for people, lightning would come out of his fingers and his palm, like the whole bolt of lightning. Like when you see a lightning storm in the sky, that same power came out of Alan's mouth and his fingers and his palm. And in the dream, the Lord said, for Alan, you have prayed for the fire for years. You have prayed for the thunder of God for years, and now God is beginning to answer Alan's own prayers, and God will release the fire and the thunder through the one who prayed it, Alan. I love that. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, Alan. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. And then the dream switched, and I looked up, and I saw heaven peering and watching, and faces from the clouds watching, sus suspenseful, like God is up to something, and heaven is watching. And I, when I woke up from the dream, I knew that God was after, with all passion, both of these groups of pe people. 
Uh, because the first group, you've taken yourself out of the river because of the thoughts that you're wrestling with. And the knowledge that Jesus wants to impart is that the struggle and the wrestle is actually drawing you closer to God. God is not overlooking people because of the struggle with thoughts like, why Wes? Why Alan? Why not me? How come I can't come on the stage? How come I can't go down there in that little circle? And then all of a sudden, I could see people begin to say, no, God, you're here with me. Thank you that Wes and Alan are getting touched. Give them more. And their thoughts are coming after them again and again. Well, how come Alan's so special? Well, what's so special about Wes? And then you begin to fight back, no, bless Alan, bless Wes. And this group of people needs to know that the struggle does not displease God, but it moves his heart. And in this group, what is getting written on your hearts is you are a lovesick worshiper. That in the midst of the struggle of your thoughts, God will win, just keep fighting. I felt as if this struggle was similar, similar to uh, in Song of Solomon verses, you know, in, in 5 7, uh, which uh, I think leads to Song of Solomon 5 8. Sometimes when you read some of the translations, there's one that I just love. And in Song of Solomon 5, she, she says, Oh, you watchmen on the wall! Exclamation point. And so I say, you get one offended sentence. One. And then the next sentence, she says, if you find my beloved, tell him I'm lovesick. To me, that's a wrestle. I mean, she was wrestling. Everybody goes through this. I think the Psalms are full of David wrestling. I think that a literal picture of that wrestle is Jacob. And I, when, I'm, I'm, when I'm reading Acts, in the book of Acts where James was killed, and my heart always goes out to John the Beloved because I think he had a wrestle moment when James was killed. The, the two brothers did everything together. This is me speaking as a mom. I think John wrestled with his emotions. I think John wrestled each time one of his friends was martyred. But that wrestle, Beloved, led him straight to the heart of God and straight to the book of revelations. And I believe that. And I just say, I was saying, keep wrestling because this wrestle will lead you to great revelation. And this wrestle will lead you straight to freedom and straight to joy. And that was the dream.